Oh, hey. Hey, uh, so you caught me. So I'm still trying these drills out here, and um, yeah, I think I like them. Anyway, we're gonna jump back here on this. Stick around, guys, I think I got a good one for you. All right, so before we get started, uh, I do wanna say a couple of things. First of all, uh, I still am trying these drills out. They're the heart drills, I wish you guys can see. And, you know, I, I like them. Now, they're not gonna replace Dewalt by any means. But for the price of these things, they're pretty damn good. I mean, they get the job done. Uh, I do have a couple trapping videos if you guys are interested in that. If you're not, that's cool too. I did use these during trapping season. Not so much this one as much. Uh, I did a little bit when I put my trail camera box on the thing so I could, anyway. Uh, I have nothing bad to say about these just yet. I'm still trying them out. So it's March now and I've had them since December. And I mean, hard, hard to beat for the price. All right, so stick around guys because we're gonna start back on this. We're gonna start where we left off. Now, this is gonna be a pretty good video, I think. Like I said, just bear with me. I'm gonna try to do no stories. So stick around. All right, guys, if you're not familiar with this setup and what all this right here is about, you know, it's about voltage drop. And if you remember on my last video, we started out, we wanted 30 amps. Come to find out, we actually needed number six wire instead of number 10. So if you're not familiar with this setup, how to find voltage drop, yada, yada, yada. Check up in the corner, guys, because I do have a, a video of how to figure out how to derate your neutrals, how to do voltage drop, and what all this right here means. All right, so keep in mind, what we need to do is we need to figure out, now before, I started out with 30 amps, because that's what I thought I needed, right? So if you had 30 amps, if you would look in the code book, you would need a number 10 gauge wire, THHN. But after figuring out my length with voltage drop, I actually needed the number six. Now, what size conduit would I need? Because had I thought originally 30 amps was all I needed for the number 10, will it be the same size conduit? So let's do this. Let's do, one, let's do two things. Let's see if I would have put the right size conduit in with number 10s. Okay, we, we need four wires over there. We would need two hots for the 240, one neutral, and then a ground, and we're gonna make these all the same size, but all be tens. So we would have needed four tens, right? So what we'll do is we'll see if this conduit will be the same size as four number sixes, right? So let's check it out and see. All right, so if we go to our ugly's book on page 88, this is the quickest way to do this. They also have apps you can use. You go to page 88 in your Uglies book. Now this Uglies book is the 2011 edition. I do have a 14, but they're the same thing. So if you go to page 88 and you look, because we know we needed four number 10s, THHN. We'll look in the THHN column for number 10s. So I would go here and I would look at THHN and it would say for half inch, I could put five and a half inch PVC, schedule 40. PVC. So we know that previously I was going to use the 10s, right? So we needed four 10s, that would be my 30 amps. But we know that with the voltage drop, we actually had to bump up the number sixes. So what size conduit? Let's check in our Uglies book. And on page 88, I'm using the 2011 edition Uglies book. All right, if we go to page 88, right here, and we look at the 10s, we know that we can put, now I always prefer to use three quarter PVC, EMT, whatever. I know my, a lot of my videos that I use half inch a lot because it's cheaper for me to show you guys how to do things on. There's nothing wrong with half inch, but for me, if you're putting PVC in the ground, bigger is better because that way there's a lot more room. You don't have to really try to fight anything. Is it gonna cost more? Sure. Is it that much more? Not really. but. We're gonna go ahead and assume that we're just gonna do the minimum. Now you can put five tens and a half inch. All right, that's PVC schedule 40. So we know we're only putting four, right? We need two hots, one neutral, and a ground. All the same size for 30 amps. However, we do know that when we did our voltage drop, like I said, if you don't know what I'm talking about with this little setup, you definitely need to go back and need to watch the video. Look up here in the corner, you'll see it. It will bring you to back to this and you'll understand why we're going this route here, all right? So we know from my distance and the voltage drop, we need to bump up the number sixes. So 
we can get four number sixes in. Let's see. So we know we go down here to sixes. Now, we cannot get that in a half inch at all. We have to go to three quarter. And at three quarter, we can only get four. Now, that's completely fine. However, if it were me, I would bump up to one inch. Now, if you go to one inch, you can get six in there. So for code purposes, you can use three quarter PVC scheduled 40. All right, and you can get four number six T H H N in there. We're gonna go by code and we're gonna do this. Now, if I would have done that, I would have been okay doing it in three quarter because I was gonna use three quarter for this. But had I went and did it the minimum, I would have used half inch, I would have been wrong. So we're safe, okay? Now let's, let's back up again, all right? So let's say we didn't know, we didn't have this book or we didn't know this scale right here. How can we figure out using a system of math to figure out if indeed three quarters big enough, one inch, half inch or whatever, right? So I'm not gonna try to confuse you. This is the easiest route to go here, okay? No, no doubt about it. You can just pop right in here and you can see that six, you have to look in your column, THHN is good for four, all right? So let's erase this, let's do the math, figure it out, and I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about by using number sixes. We'll do it with, with the tens first and then we'll do it with the sixes so you guys will see, okay? All right, I'm gonna try not to confuse you guys, okay? But this is how you would do it if you did not have the easy route, just open the book and looking, okay? This is the math part. You may one day have to do this. Why would you have to do this? If you have different insulation types, uh, different size wires, so on and so forth. But we're, here's what we're gonna do, all right? All right, you have to go to chapter nine, table one. All right, and we do know that for our first, for our first example that we had four number tens, T, H, H, N, right? So we had four of them. Now what we'll have to do is we know that if you look on chapter nine, table one, it shows you that it says one, two, over two. And it says 53, 31, and 40. Now these are percentages. All this will come together eventually, but you see these are percentages, okay? I'm gonna be erasing I'm gonna be erasing these uh, as we go, but this is what you'll see in your code book. Now you'll see the one wire in, on table one. I mean, it's, that's the only thing there basically on table one. You'll see I have one wire, you derate her 53%, two is 31 and over two is 40%. Now we do know that we're over two because we have quantity of four wires. So this is the one that we will always be using, especially in my teachings. Now, if you had just two wires, well then, you know, you'll see, you'll see this will all come together, guys, believe me. So we're gonna forget all about these right now. All we're gonna really worry about is two. So we're gonna have to go in the code book again to a different part of the code book in chapter nine. And that is on chapter nine on table, on table five. And we're gonna have to, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be over two, but we're not worried about that right now. We have, we're, we're gonna back up here. We're gonna start on this. Now, I know this may sound confusing. You know, I might be confusing you guys. I'm trying not to, but I just wanted to show you. We're gonna start with table one because we know that we're over two. So we have to go to the 40% column and all this will come into play in a minute. First of all, we need to find the THHN. We need to find the circular mills. So what we'll do is we will go to the chapter five and we will look for THHN, all right? And it's over here. And we know that we're looking for tens. So we will go straight over here to approximate area in inches squared. All right, that's the main thing we need to worry about. Not the diameter, the inches squared. So we're gonna look at THHN, number 10. We're gonna come all the way over to number 10. It is the third one down and it is 0 0.0211. Okay, that's, that's where we are in this book. So guys, if you're on chapter nine, table five, you look on THHN, number 10, you go all the way over to approximate area inches squared. You'll see 0 0.0211. Now what do we gotta do now? 
All right, we're gonna have to, we know we have four of them, so we have to times this by four. So we're gonna take four times 0 0.021, and that will equal 0 0.021. 0.0844. Okay, now we got that squared away, all right? Now remember, this is just the minimum. Remember, like I told you, um, if it were me personally, I would bump it up. Now, some of you veterans may be like, oh, well, if you do that, you're going to be costing the company money. You're true, but is it better to use bigger conduit? I mean, come on, guys. But if you were on somebody else's job, yes, this is how you would do it. So, we're just doing by code. When you actually do this, guys, use your own judgment. This is the minimum you can get away with. By code, legally, and no problems. All right, so now what we have to do is we have to go to another part of this. I know it seems complicated, right? But what I first showed you in the video is all you really need to know because it will show you exactly what I'm gonna show you here in just a second, all right? That is already taken care of. It's already reduced. Everything is squared away in the Edgar's book I showed you. All right, but we were going to do the math. So we know we had to go over to or 40%. Now, this is where that part comes into play. Now, what I mean by that, we have to go back over here to table four. All right, so we're going to flip back. We're still in chapter nine. And we know that we're using PVC schedule 40. So now we have to look up here. So article 358 is EMT, 362 is ENT, so on and so forth. So we have to go here and we have to figure out where PVC is. So we have to flip over to the next page. It's not there, it's not there. Rigid PVC scheduled 80. We're not using that, we're using 40. So here we are 40. All right, so we're gonna be looking for 0 0.084 or higher. So we need to come all the way over here to the over two wires and 40%, there it is right there. So now we know we're over two because we had four. So over two wires at 40% is right here. It's, I mean, it spells it out right here. So anyway, we have 0 0.0844. So we do know that we have to look over here and the, the only one that's, that starts at is the lowest one is 0 0.114. Well, there you are. So we look over here and you come all the way across and it shows half inch. So it's telling me that I can put four number 10s in a half inch PVC scheduled 40. Well, let's take a look because you may not remember at the beginning of this video. So let's, let's look and see if indeed the ugly's book is right. Can I get four tens THHN in a half inch schedule 40? Let's take a look and see. So we'll look here, THHN in your ugly's book, and it says number 10. Boom, you can get five and a half inch. So see, what I'm talking about with the math, it already takes it into account. There you go. Now, let's do the number sixes, just, just so you guys are aware of the math and everything, because that's important. So we already know that no matter what, I mean, I don't know why you'd pull one wire unless it's a ground wire. So that would be the only, like if you're grounding a transformer or something like that, that's usually why you would only put one wire in a condo. And that's, I mean, that's pretty much the only reason I think I don't know if. All right, anyway, let's, let's go ahead and erase this and we'll start with the number six. Okay, so we're gonna go chapter nine, table five. We need four number six THHN wires, all right? There, the, if you look in the code book right here, it shows you. Remember, you have to go to approximate area inches squared, okay? Down to THHN, you go down here, number six is 0 0.0507. Okay, chapter five, or chapter nine, table five, that's what we need to do. So what we'll do is we will take, right? We will take four times 0 0.0507, and that equals 0 0.2028. All right, this is the magic number we have to go find now, remember, we're gonna go back to table four. So then we have to go back to table four because we know that's our new number, right? So that table four, this is the number we're looking for. And the number sixes will fit in a, what size conduit? Well, let's take a look, all right? So we'll go back to table four, all right? We know we're in PVC, so that's article what, 350, Eight, is that right? Was that right? Let's see, 352. 
All right, because we're on schedule 40. Now, this thing tells you for all of them, PVC, liquid tight, uh, rigid conduit, so on, so on, EMT. But we're, what I was doing was in PVC, so we're gonna keep that in mind. Over two wires, 40%, right there. This is the what we're looking for, all right? So now we have to go all the way over here and we have to figure out what is that number. Okay, so it looks to me like 0 0.114, 0 0.203, 0 0.203. So that's bigger than this. So that's the size we need. We come all the way across here, three quarter PVC. Now let's look in the ugly book and let's see indeed if it is. We look at THHN, we look at number sixes, we look at three quarter, there it is. Already done for you guys. A couple things I want to tell you guys. I don't want to confuse you because they make it easy for an ugly's book. That's what an ugly's book is for. But guys, it's super, super important that you guys understand. So let's say you go to the supply house and let's say that they only had two of the THHN in stock, but they had RHW. So you need to figure out are those two compatible? You do the exact same things. You have to look in your code book. You have to go to chapter nine, table one, which you know you're already pulling four wires, so you're already at 40% in your code book. Then you're gonna have to go to chapter nine, table five, figure out the circular mills, which I showed you guys. It was approximate area squared. That's where your circular mills is. That's how you gotta figure that out. So you would have two THHN, whatever that number was, plus the two RHW, and then you would times that by two, and then you would add them two together. So let's just say hypothetically that, let's just say it was 0 0.014, that was two wires, so it was two wires. All right, and then the other two would have been, let's just say uh, 0 0.020, all right? So that's your four wires, because two of them would equal that. These are not actual numbers, I'm just putting them out of my head. All right, so these are the four wires. What you would do at that point, you would add them together. So you would have four and three, zero. So that's what you have to go find, all right? It's super important to know if you have different installations to do this. That's when this stuff right here comes into play a lot more. Other than that, you, if you have all the same installations, pretty much you can go to your code book. It's already done for you. And it may be the exact same, but it may not be. Because you just you've got to, you've got to know how to do your backups. I mean, this is this is what it is. You go to chapter nine, table one, you know you have two wires, you're over 40% already. You go to chapter nine, table five, figure out your circular mills. Then you go back to table four, you figure out what size you need. Or if it's all the same, I would just go to your ugly's book. This is the takeaway you guys need to know. You need to know how to do it because when you're in taking your test, this may be a question. If you guys know this, how to figure it out, you don't have to sit there for extra 20 minutes trying to figure out, oh my gosh, what is this, what is this, what is this? All this is in the code book, okay? Super easy to do, guys. I'm just showing you guys how to do it. Like I said, if I can help you guys at all, definitely let me know down below. I hope I didn't confuse you. If I did confuse you, let me know. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm trying to show you guys the easy route to do it. Obviously the easy way was just to open the Ugly's book and go right to it and figure it out. But this is the math. This is what you definitely need to know. You need to know both ways. I mean, it's just, you know, once you know this, then just use this unless you have different installations, then I would just verify that you're correct because that is important, guys. You don't want to get caught pulling, you know, 250 feet, realizing that, oh crap, I have the wrong size going to it on the ground after you done buried it. That sucks. I've never done it, thank God. I've always had somebody when I was not knowing what I was doing to real, that knew what they were doing and I didn't have to worry about it as much, thank God, because, wow, all that work, pulling, let's say 200 feet, that sucks. If you guys have ever been in the ditch, you would know what I'm talking about. Guys, if there's anything I can help you with, anything further that you guys wanna know, definitely leave a comment down below. God bless, and we'll see you next time. Have a great day.